Yeah, that, that that makes a lot of sense, Kim. And uh, and then so your your piece and like that's that's a really great step one is what are five things uh, on the elite side that you feel are missing in our game collectively. But then your your next step is okay. Like you just said, I, I got to figure out what are five sort of drills or ways to to help develop that at the local levels. And within those five or whatever it is, six, eight drills, you know, what are the key teaching points that you can all agree on, you know, um, in terms of teaching somebody how to how to pass, how to receive that sort of thing. And before Wally says it, I'll say it, uh, make sure they have a stick that's the proper length. That would be a good place to start. Well, and that's the nice thing. It's our two main programs for next year, our high performance program um, and our U9, U11 kind of launch pad program. So I can take, you know, sort of these ideas that we're, you know, maybe doing at a slightly higher level at, at HPP and and figure out, you know, the progressions from where we would start with the seven and eight year olds. And then I can fill in the blanks with all the levels in between um, that aren't necessarily addressed in those two groups. But we're trying this sort of both ends of the spectrum approach um, and see where we meet in the middle. Go ahead. Alan Andrews, um, he's done that. So be careful about reinventing the wheel and everybody reinventing the wheel. Um, Alan's programs speak for themselves in terms of the high achievement players on the technical side, but more importantly on the ethical side. But Alan's work, which have been overlooked a long period of time, um, it, it's how to teach the fundamental skills. And uh, I would suggest that being able to access those kind of fundamental resources and deliver them, he's got a laboratory. In, in Prince Edward Island, a small province, small area, and he's doing those kinds of things, not under the blessing of the provincial governing body for 40 years, but he's doing things the right way. And uh, that, you know, it's, it's one thing to just generalize passing, but boy, the importance of holding a stick and feeling it to catch and pass and shoot. Those things are, are absolutely kill and totally overlooked, ignored, forgotten about. So. Hold the stick firmly in the meat of the hand. A small knob at the top of the stick allows for a proper grip and better puck control. The V of the thumb and the first finger when gripping the stick align with the narrow side of the shaft. That um, I mean, I sort of mentioned the stick length thing in, in slightly in jest. All I totally agree with, you know, Wally's sort of take on that, and where we've kind of settled that, you know, for sure, sort of probably under Pee Wee at the very highest level, Double AA, A, Triple A, under that level, like if they don't have a stick that's a proper. but you, you'll learn to skate better, pass better, puck handle better, puck protect better, and, you know, shooting mechanics better, blah, 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 blah. So um, anyway, you're in a good position to actually do something about that. Well, you know, and I'm, I'm just sorry to beat that one to death, but thanks for bringing it up, Tim. It, 
you know, they, they, they may not be able to teach how to hold a stick in terms of the fundamentals of that, but boy, the, the proper stick like this, I just can't, I've given up on it, but it's 40 years of, of uh, seeing and believing and doing, and um, it, it, it is that important. So anyway, I'm, I'm good on that. Sammy, uh, you like playing forward now? I really, I love it. I've always loved it, as you know that, uh, Wally. Love playing forward in D. Um, but I, I have to have hip reconstruction surgery. So mm -hmm. I am now limited to only playing forward in D. Um, so I skate a little peg-legged, but mm -hmm. I figure I'm not good enough to have any set in my ways principles. So if the sharks are telling me to have a shorter stick, I should have a shorter stick. <laughs> so it, uh, it does take a little bit of time. That's the one thing, you know, for kids that, you know, I just didn't take the other stick to the rink. And I think that that's what you guys are saying is you just can't join the Wildcats if you don't have this length of stick. You know, that's just the way it is. And I'm testament to that, that um, you can teach old dogs new tricks. You can teach young dogs even better tricks. So, Well, uh, I'll be one of my greatest uh, traits in this is I use a ridiculously short stick, uh, but I don't bend my knees anymore, so that's probably problematic. But um, I would say 50% of the players. I mostly work with like Pee Wee and above in my in my total female hockey sessions, and I would say 50% of them have a stick longer than mine. And so I just say, well, I use this stick, and because they know me well enough and they know kind of my playing and coaching resume, that they I'll just give them my stick. Say, here you go, you try it. Um, and, uh, you know, they get frustrated by it and they don't, and sometimes they roll their eyes, but part of it is the modeling of it, right? I use yeah, that. And I love that idea. Cause I teach so many kids that I think that's, that's half the battle. It's just the modeling of it. And I love that idea of being able to just pass it to them. And it is so whippy. I, it's a, it's a custom that Senna lived with us. So I don't even know what it is, but it's probably a 65 or 70 flex. And I was using, um, like a Jaina Hefford one from 2000 that was an Easton, whatever it was, um, that was probably a hundred flex cut to 90 flex. And so anyways, I am now quite happy with it. I, I, you know, it's, uh, changes are, um, are a good thing. And sometimes it's just, you don't know any better. So I appreciate it. And I think it's definitely a message to disseminate. I think it's important. Well, one thing I started doing, unfortunately, uh, my kids all shoot the wrong way. They're all lefties. It's very sad. <laughs> the, you know, next thing you know, one of them's going to be a goalie, and I won't be able to help them. But uh, so I use their stick. I go out on the outdoor rink and I use their sticks. My son's pretty tall, but he's not that tall. And I, I'm trying to teach myself how to stick handle using his stick. It barely comes up to my waist. But it's interesting because you go into that beginner mindset, and I go, okay. How do I hold the stick properly on the left side? I've never done that before, right? How do I, if I was going to teach, you know, a learn to play kid, how to roll their top hand and how to, you know, not overuse their bottom hand. Like I'm, I actually am teaching myself it on the other side with this super, super short stick, which is allowing me to then go to my, my daughters and say, okay, you have to do this and try this. And, you know, it's funny, my son doesn't seem to have the inclination to be, you know, a, a full-time hockey kid here in Toronto, which is fine by me. But I taught him how to get his hands away from his body. And he's nice. like over, like he skates around like this all the time. He, his top hand never even comes within, you know, five inches of his body. And I thought, you know, that only took a couple days to fix. And in girls hockey, it's an epidemic of the top hand glued to the... I know, Bob, you have your hand up, but I just... Um... Go ahead. If, if you want to ask a question, go ahead. No, no, I was just going to say that uh, you got to caution kids when they, uh, parents don't want to cut down these $200 sticks, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, that's an issue. But when they do cut it down, it changes the flex immensely. So I've got sitting here in the corner behind me a stick of Brett Hulls. It's an 80 flex. I can show it to you if you like. And it probably, um, I'm not very tall and I'm in my bare feet. It probably comes to my mouth. And Brett Hulls is a bigger guy than I am. And that's an 80 flex, and that's that's the stick from the Stanley Cup in 99. So these 
there's also a video out that I think uh, Crosby and I think McKinnon are in it, and they talk about short stick. And I think that's something that every parent should be made to watch. I guess my, my two cents, which I think most of you have heard before, but Bob in response, because you hear that all the time, is like the sticks are so expensive and, you know, they don't want to they don't want to cut them off because um, they'll outgrow them the next year. And my response always is, well, you know, let's think about if your son or daughter was learning how to play baseball. Would you give them. Uh, major league bat that weighs like 38 or 40 ounces and have them try to swing it or if they're learning how to play golf would you give them Tiger Woods driver and try to teach them how to swing it you need size appropriate equipment and uh, anyway so that's part of my pitch and it's kind of funny I, I in our outdoor rink here this year like um, that's one of the things I'm always on the lookout for that stuff and uh, I managed to convert one kind of 12-year-old who was a pretty pretty good player, actually, and his dad played Division III. Um, but, you know, I convinced him to cut his stick down just a little bit. It was, Wally, I wish I had a video. It was friggin' amazing. Like, he was, he's a good little player, but right away you could see shooting, passing mechanics. I'm like, wow, now you look like a player. You, you know, and, uh, and sadly, there, there was a little 10, 11, 12 year old girl who's a ringette player, could be a hell of a hockey player. And she's got the stick up to here and her dad won't let her cut it off. Mom, I've totally sold on it. Even got to the point where I'm like, I'm cutting one of my sticks off and I'm giving it to you before I realize she's a righty and I'm a lefty. So I'm going to help <laughs> too much. But, but anyway, uh, just kind of an anecdotes, but it's so so important for enjoyment as much as anything. And that's the last thing is sort of on the size appropriate. I mean, it's it's just more fun to be able to like this one girl, Rebecca. She she sticks her nose in. She's gritty. She's fearless. But she gets a puck and she can't do anything with it. Um, and she's not going to enjoy the game as much. So hopefully next year. Go ahead, Wally. Just uh, kudos to Hockey Canada and the branches. Exactly what you talked about, they cover, and in video, they cover the size of the ice surface with a USA hockey example, men playing on a soccer field and talking about how difficult it was and imagining kids. So it's selling this rink size idea and the importance of small area games. And the the other idea in tennis, they have kids on a tennis court and basketball court shooting at a tall basket. They're trying to make the same point we're talking about here. So in respect of what they're doing, these are the kind of things, when you talk about passing, <laughs> you know, these are the kind of things that are that important, not just at that level, coach one, coach two, but to bring up later, because all of them have parents who have been taught about nose, top of the forehead defense, or nose defense, or chin, mouth maybe, for, uh, forwards. And there's some conditioning, there's some de uh, education to do here. And it's uh, been, been around forever, like uh, Alan's programs have been in existence 40 years. And uh, they, they've been able to get most of their candidates, of which Crosby and McKinnon are two of those candidates. And um, Tim has produced a docu uh, an Alan Andrews document on stick length and proper stick grip. And he's filled in the stats of all the NHL Hall of Fame players whose stick lengths are the proper length. So we've been through this topic, uh, Bob, uh, for many years and been promoting it, especially in Cochrane with the group we work for, because 
we've had a chance to talk about it together. So excellent conversation, everybody. Um, well, Tim, I had a very similar experience at one of my skill sessions with a girl who's, she's got to be 6'1", super athletic, uh, coming from Bantam AA. Can you imagine a U15 girl, 6'1"? Um, and she's actually a phenomenal passer. I, I gave her that compliment and she was like, oh, no one's ever told me that before. But she is like, she was light years ahead of everyone else, but she had a longer stick. So I, and her dad's a, a, a head of gym, gym at uh, one of the high schools in, uh, in Markham. So I said, you got to cut your stick. She said, how much should I cut? So I, you know, I took my pen out of my pocket and drew a line and she came back the next day with the stick cut. She's like, okay. And she, she was, like you said, instantly, like she got, went, I, I said, I called our midget double A coach. I'm like, you got to take this kid. She said, why? I said, I cut her stick four inches and she just got 10% better, 15% better. Like she, it was an instant transformation of her ability to handle the puck and, and it made her passing even better. And uh, it, it definitely in, increased her, her shooting ability as well. So it was neat to see that. And the cool thing was, you know, there's 15 other girls on the ice, all midget double A junior and bantam double A. And I took the opportunity to praise her on this choice. And they all had been on the ice with her for weeks. So they, they saw the difference too. Like it was pretty instantaneous. And all of a sudden, a couple of, I started to see a couple of them cutting their sticks shorter. Right. So, you know, it, it was fortunate. We got to have that great example with, with some very high level players on the ice. Um, but she, you know, she's been posting videos on Instagram or whatever, her shooting outside. And I always comment, oh, see, I see that stick, that short stick still looking really good out there. Um, so hopefully she makes our junior teams pretty soon. But uh, she's, uh, it was pretty cool to see that instant transformation for sure. A few of our Danish girls have got to work on still. We're going to put it on the shelf till after the world championship and try to try to get them there by uh, the November Olympic qualifier that we have. Um, but there's, you know, like one, one of the D, same thing. One, one of the D, her stick is probably four or five inches longer than the one I use. And I know I've mentioned that before too, but uh, anyway, it's quite the topic. And I still would love to do, I hope post COVID, I hope I actually do this. I would love, love to get, permission from the NHL PA and the NHL to whenever teams come into Calgary here post COVID that, that I could go down and at first just do a real simple stick measurement thing. Like as the guys are going on the ice, okay, where is it? Chin inch below two inches below above, and then do a forward D comparison, of course. But I, I'm pretty certain that the best, offensive players would all be on the short end of that. Um, and if the best offensive players are there, it's, they're, it, they have it that way for a reason, um, and we could all benefit from it. Anyway, that's a, hopefully a little post-COVID project. I'd love to do that. But I did an interesting podcast just recently. I haven't released it yet, but with Danielle Sauvageau. And we talked about um, how she didn't have a hockey background. She never got to play. You know, it wasn't something that she got to play. And the similarities in how she um, really used Scotty Bowman as a reference. And um, that when Scotty was on the ice with us also, he like he, was, he wasn't very good. 
But because of that, Danielle talks a lot about how she had to learn the game and really think about those intricacies. Like you said, Kim, you're, you're learning it all from the beginning. And how would I teach this? And so she went through the process. And so it's really fascinating because I would have never said that she was a technical coach, but in fact, she did her um, technical um, presentation for her level five on goaltending, which really surprised me because I wouldn't have said that that would have been her strength at all, but she had to learn, she had to learn it all from the get go. And she figured that if no other coaches know about this, I should figure this out so that I can, you know, figure. So I'm sure that, you know, it says a lot about parent coaches that are coming into your organizations that don't know much about hockey that, you know, they could be even better coaches because they're, they are learning it also at the same time.